Hey guys, Hannah Bell, Family Lawyer here with the Family Law 101. All right, let's get back to some basics, although not so basic. You can see my new special edition hummingbird for my office from Franco down in San Antonio, Franco Mondini Ruiz. If you guys um, don't follow his art, it's the best. And I'm so super excited. It's not hung up yet. So I'm like, just move my chair over here in the office because it's sitting like needing to get hung up. Um, but a big reveal coming soon. But okay, anyway, Family Law 101. I was thinking that something that's super clear to lawyers, that's all, not necessarily all that clear all the time to um, clients is a rule 11 agreement. Cause your lawyer will just say like, let's just do a rule 11 agreement. And you're like, rule 11, like what are rules one through 10 <laughs> first? And second, what's a rule 11 and why do I need one? Okay, simple. Uh, like for something to be able to be enforced by a court, it doesn't necessarily have to get, uh, decreed by a judge like from the you know stadium pulpit whatever you call it, where the judge sit, the bench Jesus. um so it doesn't necessarily have to go just from the bench okay your lawyer and your x factors lawyer can enter into an agreement that they have to memorialize in writing it has to be signed by both of the lawyers um and then filed with the court okay to indicate their agreement and whenever they do that, it takes on some sort of magic powers and it becomes like it's a court order, okay? So this agreement that's signed and filed uh, has the force and effect of, of the court order. Uh, so there's no messing around with these Rule 11 agreements. Now they're good because you can skip the need to go to a hearing um, on some sort of smaller issue or you know sometimes even some really big issues. They can skip the need for a hearing, they can help you you know, have some comfort and sort of security in everything, knowing that your agreement can be enforced. It's just not what was said between the lawyers, which is, you know, depending on the lawyers, sometimes not as good as the, you know, air it's breathed into. Um, but if it's written down and filed, then it has to be followed by everybody. Now, they're good for those reasons. They're also, you know, the other edge of that double-edged sword is they're bad for those reasons. Like, you have to follow rule 11 agreements as if they're the order of the court. It's not like, um, you know, optional or something. You can have a lot of consequences of not doing that. But I think sometimes people don't take them quite as seriously because the lawyers just put it on their letterhead and signed it and that's it. Um, they don't understand. This has the effect of a court order. Okay, so rule 11 agreements. Agreements between lawyers that once written, filed, signed by everybody, they have the um, effect of a court order. You'll see them in your case. Hopefully you use a lot of them to avoid the need for hearings all the time. So, Family Law 101, Rule 11 Agreements. Have a great day.